The top 15 upcoming games 2017. I'm going to try and keep this this short, sweet, and beautiful. I'm not sure how much booty there's going to be in this. I don't think there's any Konami games. There is Crash Bandicoot, though. Um, but I'm not going to cover any games which come out each year, like Battlefront 5 or Assassin's Creed 20, because you already know they're coming out. And also, the order doesn't really matter that much in this. It's more about sort of just giving you an idea as to what's coming out soon. Number 15, Horizon Zero Dawn. Comes out on the PlayStation 4, which seems to be a bit of a trend at the moment. Everything seems to be coming out on the PlayStation 4. Comes out 28th of February, and it's built on the Decimer engine, which Death Stranding is also built on. Ygret, our red-headed hero, well, she's back, and it turns out Jon Snow actually does know nothing, and he's got himself stuck in this post-apocalyptic wasteland full of robot machines wandering around. That's season 8 Game of Thrones, it's gonna be great. This, however, you play as a hunter called Alloy, a thousand years after nature has taken the world back from humans. It actually looks really good, this. Like, you see one of them Dipla freaking docuses, you can climb up it, break a rocket launcher off its neck, and then shoot a robot T-Rex with it. Fourteen for Honor comes out February the 14th on everything. It's set in this medieval apocalyptic fantasy land where there's three factions, the Legion, who are knights, the Chosen, who are samurai, and the Warborn, who are vikings. And they're all sat around doing friend stuff like sharpening each other's swords. I actually googled that, see what knights do in their spare time. Wouldn't recommend it. Um, <laughs> and this war bitch called Napoleon comes along and she just spoils everything for them. There's only so many times you can tell a Viking his beard looks ridiculous before he wants to kill you. That's <laughs> probably true for anybody, actually. And it's got this very cool art of battle system built into it. Surprisingly technical, because when you watch it, it looks like somebody's accidentally sat on their controller. But there's three directions you can attack slash deflect in, and every character is different. Like, there's this little ninja lady who can dance behind people and stab in the back called Orochi, and then there's this massive, fat Viking guy. Now, he's slower, so you can run away from him on the bigger maps, but if he catches up for you, you're in for the pain pockets. You and your warriors will learn to live like the rest of us! Napoleon played us all, one against the other. For what? To weed out the weak. I took an oath to fight for peace. So did you. Through me, the wolves among them will rise again. Who do you think you are? War. I am war. Number 13, Spider-Man, also comes out on the PlayStation 4. I don't know anything about this game, but I just like Spider-Man, so I'll put this in. If you want the official blurb line from it, it's that an experienced per Peter Parker struggles to balance his personal life and career with the fate of 9 million New Yorkers. Number 12, Ghost Recon Wildlands. This comes out all platforms on March the 7th. There's also a beta towards the end of February, so you should watch out for that. But the game is set in Bolivia. It turns out Heisenberg has expanded his operations and is now formed the Santa Blanca 
drug cartel. Your Parvan elite special forces unit sent in to inform him that he is indeed not the one who knocks. <laughs> that should be on the back of their box, I don't know. But yeah, it's four player co-op. If you do want to play on your own, then uh, you get three AI teammates who I've been promised don't get stuck in the llamas. There are llamas wandering around the land. You can kill them if you want to and then use them to rest your gun on as you overwatch the other AI who are wandering in the wrong direction. But yeah, apparently it's the biggest open world game Ubisoft have ever made. Careful now. Number 11, Injustice 2. I don't know too much about this, but I saw Wonder Woman punching Harley Quinn, so that's why it's in the list. <laughs> this is on PlayStation 4 and Xbox. Uh, it comes out May the 16th. Apparently, it's Mortal Kombat, but with every DC hero and villain you'd ever won. Although I don't think you can dissolve somebody's face with acid in this. You can punch them into the scenery, though, and into a different scene. Literally, you can punch them from one map to the other. You're losing control. He's part of my charm. Stop trying to kill me, will ya? Days gone. It's two years after a pandemic has killed millions and turned them into freakers. You play as Deacon St. John, who's got the most 90s action hero name I think I've ever heard. It also stars Kurt Russell, Sylvester Sloan and Wesley Snipes, and they all decide that it's just too much, this zombie apocalypse. So Kurt Russell escapes from a city, Sylvester Sloan climbs a cliff, and Wesley Snipes turns out to be this vampire thing that's all right in daylight. But Deacon, he's this drifter who uh, apparently goes from camp to camp helping people, bounty hunting and just generally doing Rick Grimes stuff. The game's also made, by the way, by the same people who made Siphon Filter. If you don't know what Siphon Filter is, it's basically Splinter Cell before Splinter Cell. Go on. Get out of here. Get out. Well, that ain't him. Look around, brother! You know how this is gonna end. Crash Bandicoot. They're remastering it. And Bulletstorm, by the way. They're remastering Bulletstorm. Look how good it looks. I, I think the Bulletstorm one's called Final Clip, but yeah, if you're interested and they're worth playing, comes out this year. Number six. 
Raid, Mass Effect Andromeda comes out on all platforms March the 21st. Apparently it's had a big graphical improvement, switch from Unreal Engine to Frostbite. It's going to be interesting seeing what Space Hanky Panky looks like in 4K now. But it's set 600 years after the first three games in, believe it or not, the uh, Andromeda Galaxy. You're aboard the starship Tempest and you're a, a pathfinder. Person who finds paths to uh, new planets for humans to colonize. Each planet is apparently more open world than it used to be, so you can now travel around it in the Nomad All Terrain vehicle. There's a boss on each planet you've got to defeat, and a big change you can now build your speciality over the course of the game and reallocate skill points as you go along instead of being fixed at the start. Number 7, Detroit Become Human. This is another PlayStation 4 exclusive, but it's by the writer of Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls, which are both very good sort of story-driven kind of thriller games. But in this one, you play as different androids in this sort of futuristic society. That's why their blood is blue, apparently. Uh, one of them, Kara, has got to escape the factory she's made in. I don't know, that kind of reminds me of like Somni 451 in... Uh, Cloud Atlas. I don't know if it's going to be something similar to that, but one of the other androids is apparently called Connor, and he hunts down the even android, so I guess at some point he's probably going to be hunting down Kara. I'll just share a bit of gameplay here to see if you're interested. Here in downtown Detroit. Details are still emerging on what exactly happened, but the hostage shaker could be the family's android. Negotiator on site. Please, please, you gotta save my little girl. Wait. You're sending an android? All right, ma'am. We need you to go. You can't do that. You... Why aren't you sending a real person? Captain up. Tell that helicopter to get out of here. to me, Connor. You are to me. Number six, Prey. This comes out quarter two on everything. It's actually on uh, CryEngine as well, rather than Bethesda's new engine that they used for Dishonored 2. Uh, but it's set in this alternative history where JFK survives the assassination attempt. You play Morgan Yu, and you have many problems. The aliens from Edge of Tomorrow have decided that they're going to attack Earth again. Fortunately, Earth manages to defeat them and store them in a prison space station called Talos One, where they're only allowed to do one thing, play prop hunt. Understandably, they go crazy, and the space station goes offline. You're sent in to investigate. Good morning, Morgan. Today is Monday, March 15th, 23-232. Good morning, Morgan. Looks like we have some tests to run through today. Number 
Number 5, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This comes out 3rd of March and is of course the main game for the Nintendo Switch, which if you live near where I live is probably going to get switched pretty fast for a punch in the face when I get mugged for it. But uh, <laughs> they're all the rage though in Asia apparently, these uh, Switches, but then again they know Kung Fu. But the game is set in the ruined kingdom of Hyrule. It didn't used to be ruined, but uh, Link has been asleep for a hundred years. And in the meantime, Calamity Ganon, the boar knight bad guy fella who spends his time trying to capture Princess Zelda, well, he's ruined it. What a dick. He's currently in prison, though, in Hyrule Castle, and he's building his power to escape. And now you're awake. You've got to stop this. Number 4, Death Stranding. This is another PlayStation exclusive and it's a bit of a big one. Uh, it's got H Hideo Kojima directing it, who of course got sacked by Konami recently, he's from Metal Gear Solid and the rest. It's got Guillermo del Toro, whose name I definitely said wrong, writing the story, Mad Mikkelsen as the bad guy, and Norman Reedus as, I guess, the good guy who, apparently from this, does not like sushi. I have no idea what this is about, by the way, but it just kind of looked cool. It's got William Blake's poem at the uh, in the previous trailer, which is generally about like nature taking things back. But there's freaking skeleton soldiers and whales. That Death Stranding is like when whales and stuff strand themselves and die on a beach. That's where it comes from. But that's all I know so far. But I'll let it play here. Number 3, God of War. PlayStation 4 and single player only, but it's many years since Kratos took revenge against the Olympian gods, and he now lives in this world of Norse gods, monsters, and Ragnar Lothbrok. It actually reminded me a bit of uh, The Last of Us, though, watching this, because uh, you take your son along to battle all these creatures, and it sort of develops that relationship as you go along, so quite different from the previous games. Also, he switched out his double blades, because he lost them in the previous one, for a battle axe, which is kind of cool. Now, boy! Wait! What? Do it! Off the ice! No! Number two, Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, the number one must be good if this is the second one. A lot of people think this is going to be a prequel, so you'll you'll be playing as John Marston again, although you could be playing as his son. So, yeah, 
That didn't really help you, but I'll let it play. Listen to me. When the time comes, you gotta run and don't look back. This is over. Number one, Last of Us 2, which is also a PlayStation exclusive. Uh, apparently, it could come out up until the end of 2018, which is quite a long time, but yeah, this is the trailer for it. On this earth forevermore Said I walk beside the still waters and they Restore my soul But I can't walk on the path of the right Because I'm wrong No, I can't walk on the path of the right Cause I'm wrong What are you doing, kiddo? You really gonna go through with this? I'm gonna find, and I'm gonna kill every last one of them. Thank you. 